The web relentlessly strips context from stories as they travel through it. And, and sometimes it adds context that is a little bit deceptive. So when looking at a story or a photo that reaches you, it's often important to get as close to the original version of that story or that photo as possible. Think of it like going back to the first person in a game of a broken telephone. Now, the good news, it usually is pretty easy to get closer to the original source. And, and once you're there, it's easy to check whether the source says what people said it did. Let's look at this example, a, a case of re-reporting. Here we have a story from the UK Mirror with important information. It, it claims that there's evidence that coronavirus can cause strokes in otherwise healthy young adults. Now, the core of the story is an interview with a doctor. But scanning the story, we see the interview with that doctor wasn't actually done by the mirror. It was done by a source called CNN. So, so here's the first thing. We're going to click that link and we're going to go to CNN, the original reporting source. Now we're lucky here. The mirror provided the link to the source that they are using the story from, right? But if they hadn't, it wouldn't matter. You can usually find the original story using the search terms, the same sort of techniques we used earlier to find better coverage. And if you don't know CNN, you can do our Wikipedia check. In this case, I'll vouch for them. CNN is a well-known cable news network, and it's going to be an okay source for this sort of story. Now, what do we learn when we look at the article? More or less, it checks out, right? It reports an interview with Thomas Oxley, a neurosurgeon at the hospital in New York. He told CNN that his team was seeing an increased incidence of stroke in young people. It's an article from a professional news organization. It quotes an expert who's in a position to know. Uh, the person that would see this sort of stuff in New York would likely be a neurosurgeon, right? It's, it's about strokes. And, and he has expertise, right? It's not the last word here. This is one hospital. It's one doctor. Uh, if you were writing a research report on this, you'd probably want to wait for a real study, something that looked at something bigger than one hospital's experience. But it's a reliable reporting source, important information, and good enough to share. Even though the story checked out, we landed at a source that put the story in context, and it's a better story to read. It's a better story to share, which is why you'll want to go to the original source most of the time. Let's look at another example, uh, one with a few more steps. And by, and by few, I, I mean two, okay? Uh, one way misinformation can spread is through false context. Now, this is when real or factual context is shared, um, but it's shared with a false comment or a summary that misrepresents its significance. Take, take this example. This person says that a husband and wife team of Chinese spies was removed from a Canadian infectious disease lab for sending pathogens to Wuhan. It says the husband specialized in coronavirus research. In the link, it's to the CBC, which is a reliable source. The headline seems to support the claim. A researcher with ties to China was escorted out of an infectious disease lab by authorities except there's some pieces missing from the headline, right? Like, was the researcher a Chinese spy? Did, did her husband really specialize in coronavirus research? None of that is in the headline. Uh, it would be a weird coincidence if it was true and we'd worry about it, but it's not there. So there's two parts to this, right? There's the linked story, which is from a reputable source we trust, and then there's a summary of what's in that linked story, which here is provided by someone we don't know. So what do we do? We, we start by clicking in the story, right? That's step one. For step two, we search the page to see if this story is really about the virus or spying at all. Now, many of you will know how to search a web page, but just in case, on desktop browser, you hit Control F, Command F on a Mac, on a phone, you use this little drop down menu on your browser. This is usually in the upper right hand corner of your phone, it says find and page, something like that. Now we plug in terms, right? So we plug in COVID. Nope. Uh, plug in coronavirus. Nope. <laughs> you know, plug in, how about spy or spies? No and no. The only hits we're getting here are other headlines and some menu items. Now you can plug in more terms, but you won't find those either. It's a good sign that this framing might have been deceptive. And if you read the page more deeply, you'll find out that's the case, right? Um, it turns out the story is about a policy breach. It just doesn't have anything to do with COVID-19 or spying, right? It's an interesting article, but one that was completely misrepresented by the person who shared it with us. Now, the upshot, if a source you don't know or trust is summarizing a link for you, verify their summary by clicking through and conducting a simple search. 